I worked as a flight attendant for lots of different airlines before joining Morana Air. The management just treats us differently here. No one complains about their paycheck or has to worry about how they're getting to their accommodations from the airport between flights. Everything is taken care of for us. If you aren't familiar with Morana Airlines, you probably don't know about our signature all-black planes with their high ceilings and highly specific accommodations. If you thought Emirates was tailor-made for their passengers, you should see the bespoke treatment we give our guests. But there are certain rules when you fly aboard Morana Airlines, and those who don't follow the rules will face consequences beyond their understanding. This is plush. Hot oh, damn, Margie, look at these seats. Hey man, I gotta ask, are those leather? I smiled at the man and his wife taking their tickets. The finest Italian leather. We only use the best here on Morana. Right this way to your seats, I, I trust you've read the instruction manual? The man cleared his throat from behind me as I walked them to their seats. Yeah, uh, what's all that about anyway? Is that some kind of joke? Because if it is, we don't get it. Not a joke, merely a formality. This is a different sort of airline than you might be accustomed to, that's all. Our owner does things in her own way and provides a lot of free upgrades at great cost to herself. All that she asks is that the passengers read the manual carefully and follow its directives. The couple sat down in their seats and I took their carry-ons, stowing them in the overhead compartment. They were looking up at me with worry in their eyes. I'd seen that look a thousand times before. Here, I have a spare. Just read through it as best as you can. They began to study the manual I'd handed them, and I went back to the next group of passengers. There was always one. Today, it looked like there might be two. The plane took off as the engines roared loudly, and I looked around to ensure that everybody had their seatbelts on. Nobody was in the aisles. So far, so good. Once we were at cruising altitude, I began with drink service. Making my way down the aisle, I finally got to the couple. They were smiling, looking at me sheepishly. We get it, the woman said. Very funny. My face remained blank. I knew these two were going to be a problem. I had to read it three times, the man said, grinning. He really had me going. Man, the big corporations these days are really getting clever with their marketing. I've seen Wendy's Twitter account. This is like that, right? Viral marketing? Well, you got me. I posted this on X, and it's already got a bunch of likes and comments. People think it's hilarious. I try not to show any reaction to what he just said. Hmm. May I see the pictures you've shared online? He showed me, smiling. And you did read number 12 in the manual? His smile faltered for a second, and he began to read again. Don't share pictures of your flight on social media or with anyone who was not on the flight with you. But it's just a joke, right? The woman asked. It's not serious. I mean, look at these other rules. Number three, don't breathe between minutes 48 and 49 of the flight. Number 16, if you see a man with no face serving drinks, don't speak to him. I didn't laugh, and neither did any of the other passengers. They were looking coldly at the couple, waiting to see what would happen. There was always at least one. Someone always had to break the rules. Are you able to delete that post from social media? I asked. That part of it was actually real. Oh, yeah, I, I guess I can. Sure, no problem. He pulled out his phone and tapped on the screen a couple times. There, it's gone. No harm, no foul. The captain's voice suddenly came on the overhead PA. Oh, Mr. Thompson, if only that were true. Unfortunately, you have violated the rules of Morana Airlines, and as such, you are subject to its punishments. The couple's face was slowly draining of color, turning pale and white as sheets. If this is a joke, it's not a very good one, the woman said, as if trying to convince herself she wasn't scared. Several other passengers stood up from their seats and closed in on the pair quickly. They would learn the rules eventually, just like all of us did. When we were preparing for takeoff in Toronto, I saw a man coming up the ramp and looking at the plane in wonderment. 
He whistled softly to himself as he stepped on board. Oh, this is quite an airplane you folks have for yourselves. Better than Emirates, that's what the guy at the counter told me. Is that true? Hey, you guys got those hot towels you can put on your face? Mr. Thompson came over and took the man gently by his arm, leading him over towards the seat. I could tell from the moment I met him that he would make a fine flight attendant. We certainly do have those hot towels you put on your face. They come out piping hot and steamy from the oven, and we bring them straight over to you after meal service. I can't get one now, can I? Mr. Thompson shot me a glance. I shook my head. His wife Margie was standing next to me, watching her husband as she took care of the man. It's him then? Yes, I told her. There's always at least one. Sometimes two or three at the most. But we always get a new passenger with each flight. And they never follow the rules? I shook my head sadly, as her husband tried to explain to the man why he couldn't have his hot towel right now, and the man bickered about why he should be able to. Have you read the instruction manual? Here, I have a spare copy. This, this is vital information. Vital. Read through it very carefully. Mrs. Thompson had to ask the question. I knew she would, since they always did. How can we keep getting new passengers? This plane is big, but it's not that big. I pulled back the black curtain beside us, which revealed the front part of the plane. Rows and rows of seats extended on and on, going forever into the distance. It was like looking into a mirror which was positioned in front of another mirror. The seats never ended, just getting smaller and smaller as they faded off into the distance, and passengers became the size of ants. Welcome to first class, I said. You work hard enough. One day you might get to sit up there. The story you just heard was written by me, and a variation of it previously featured on the Doctor No Sleep podcast and YouTube channel. If you'd like to check out their channel for more content, please check out the description below. Become a channel member today for early access, bonus videos, and special emojis only available to members. Check out the description below or click the join button for more info. If you'd like another way to help support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Jordan Group Horror. As a patron, you'll get access to bonus videos and content, you'll be credited at the end of every video going forward, and if you decide to stay for three months, I'll name a character after you which will be featured in a Hollow's End story. Links to join the Patreon are in the description. Thanks everyone for listening, please like, subscribe, and comment to help the channel continue to grow, and see you again next time at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you have a great night.